All right. Hello. Um, I want to welcome all our coaches and players and, and maybe some parents, some mom and dads out there who have an opportunity to kind of sit back and join another Coaches Insider webinar with uh, Blast Motion. So uh, I have a unique opportunity today to kind of get a pulse of uh, the high school baseball scene. I've got three great uh, high school coaches here, and we've also got to bring in one of our, well, not one of our, our best partner, uh, the ABCA, and get a little bit of a pulse of uh, their memberships and all the coaches that are out there. So First, uh, we're going to go around the tape room and eventually introduce ourselves, but I want to thank uh, this panel for taking some time to, uh, to connect with Blast, and then also take a quick second, and for all those that signed up and are listening in, a, a big thank you to you um, as we, we start going. So, we want to click on to the uh, next slide. Okay, just for all the uh, webinar attendees that are on there, a reminder, uh, not a reminder, but uh, an intro that you can leave any question that you want down below. Um, these things usually run uh, in a good way a little long. Coaches like to tell us about their story. So if we don't specifically get to your question uh, right now, um, I personally will follow up on my own and email you any responses to any questions that you might have. Our last webinar was great. We got about 40 questions from different coaches and I took the time to, uh, to email each one of those. Before we dive into our topic today, um, I want to take a quick 30 to 60 seconds around the room introduction. I know we've got some school teachers on here, so you guys know what it's like first day at school, just kind of introducing yourself, where you're from, and your background. So uh, for myself, I'll move a little bit uh, left or right. So Aaron, if you want to tell us about your program, uh, specifically what you, you know, your title there, and maybe just a little brief background on your, your passion for the game. Um, yeah, my name is Aaron Burroughs. I'm an assistant coach at Owasso High School, which is in Owasso, Oklahoma, a little bit north of Tulsa. Uh, this is my third year there. I'm a varsity assistant. Um, I coach the outfielders and I assist with our hitters. Um, before coming to Owasso, I spent 11 years at a nearby town called Skyatook. Five of those years, I was the head coach. And before that, I was in Norman High School. So um, this is my 20th year coaching high school baseball in Oklahoma, coming originally from Colorado. Great. He's a Sooner, so you Texas guys take it easy on yeah. him, all right? So. <laughs> Ryan, I know I've seen your face quite a bit uh, with the Barnstormers events and uh, the ABCA National Convention the last two years with myself, but uh, I know it's been going on forever. So, Ryan, tell me a little bit about your passion for the game and your background with ABCA, and I'll, I'll sit back. Yeah, Matt, thanks for uh, having me on. Um, I coached for 22 years at the Division One level. I started at Evansville, played there. Coached at James Madison in Virginia, then Iowa for nine years, and then was the head coach at Western Illinois for seven years. And that's how I got in with Blast uh, in the beginning and the early on, uh, just getting sensors for our guys at Western and used it there. Uh, and for anybody that wants to reach out to me, uh, you can find me at rbrownlee at abca.org. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, Coach B underscore ABCA. And you can also find me on Instagram at ryanbrownlee17. Uh, our relationship has been great uh, with the ABCA and Blast, uh, with the Barnstormers events. Uh, we've been all over the country, and it's amazing to me how many guys are using it. Uh, and uh, it's a really easy, uh, really easy technology to use. And I was a guy that always liked to test, retest, and it was really easy to have our guys test and retest at, at uh, Western Illinois. Uh, and it's it's been cool because we're hitting all kinds of levels. Uh, from pro on down with Blast, and uh, it's amazing uh, what you guys have been able to do, and I'm just uh, happy to be a small part of it. Right. You guys are a big part. We love, I mean, again, it's been, been going on for three years with ABCA, and we're coming up on our fourth year of a partnership, so it's been great. Billy, tell me a little bit about your program and a little bit about your background. I've uh, been uh, coaching uh, high school baseball here in Texas uh, for about uh, uh, eight, this is my 18th year. I've uh, been a uh, the head coach at Cypher High School, which is uh, Northwest Houston, uh, for uh, the last uh, three years now. Uh, you know, prior to that, I've been at four different schools. I've been a head coach at a different school uh, before. Um, and, uh, you know, just, just growing up, you know, just being, you know, a baseball kid that, that loved to play. And when I couldn't play anymore, I, I wanted to coach. And uh, it's been a passion of mine and, and being able to uh, – be here and sit sit on this webinar with these guys. Uh, you know, it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome to to be able to uh, to do something like this. So uh, I'm I'm uh, very happy for the opportunity. Right. Excited to hear about your program, everything you guys are doing. So, Jason, 
not quite last. I put myself last in the introduction, so you'll you'll get to go next. So tell us a little about yourself, your program, and what's going on. Matt, first off, man, thanks for uh, thanks for having me and and for the opportunity. This is uh, this is great. Love love sitting with with uh, guys like this and and hearing what they have to say. Um, I am the head baseball coach at Alamo Heights High School, which uh, sits right in the heart of San Antonio, Texas. Um, this is like Billy, my 18th year overall. It's my sixth um, at Heights. Uh, before that, I uh, I grew up a coach's kid. Um, I can I can remember tagging along with my dad to ABCA conventions and um, you know and, and doing that as, as early on as um, as my high school days. And uh, so it's it's um, it's been great to always be a part of that fraternity and that community. Um, I played at the University of Texas Pan American. Uh, when I when I finished there, I got my degree, um, got a job in the in the Houston area as an assistant. I was uh, I was in that role for a year, and then uh, had a head coaching opportunity fall in my lap at a at a really young age. Um, made a lot of mistakes along the way, and uh, tried to you know try to learn from that and learn from the guys around me and. You know, hopefully, hopefully, I've gotten a little bit better as you know as time has gone on. But um, man, I tell you what, it's just there, there's there's nothing else in the world that I would rather be doing um, than than coaching and, and specifically coaching baseball. It's uh, it's a dream come true every day. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate it. So, uh, real brief on my background, I just came up on my two year anniversary. So, congratulations, Blast has had me around for two years now. Um, you know, I. I grew up, I, th I think Jason, Billy, Ryan, you guys grew up in like a coach family, right? Like you guys had, oh, yeah. and Aaron, did you grow up in a coach family too? Or was it just kind of something you did? My dad did, not at, like, not at the high school level, but he was our coach growing up. So so here we are, right? All of us. So my, my brief background is my, my grandfather was, was Chuck Tanner, managed and played in the big leagues for a while. So I grew up right in the middle of it. Um, had the unique opportunity to play at uh, the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, a long time ago. So it's still coming 20 years ago. Um, but I've been fortunate to be back in baseball, um, you know, the last two years with last motion and, uh, just to, you know, credit to, to, you know, with the guys that are, that our side brought in just a lot of, a lot of baseball guys, a lot of baseball background. So I'm glad to have you guys all on here. Um, I also want to highlight, you know, I, I reached out to Jason and then I reached out to our account management. They, Billy, they mentioned Billy and Aaron would be great to have on. I actually didn't know you guys were ABCA members before I reached out to you. And, um, you know, just kind of goes to show this network, which is kind of where I want to take this next kind of around, around the room conversation. But, um, you know, all you guys are, are connected to the ABCA, which is pretty cool, right? Um, so before we even kind of get into Ryan specifically and Jason and Aaron, um, I just want to talk a little bit about this baseball fraternity, right? Um, whether it's the ABCA, which is kind of our big, big fraternity, right? This, this great group, national brand, a whole lot of people, but even down to those small community, whether it's your assistants or your head coaches or those guys that are working on the field and just what that means when we're going through kind of a unique time right now where we're kind of picking each other all up. So you guys wouldn't mind just giving me about 45 seconds, maybe a minute or so on what that community's felt like from, from the ABCA and down to your local communities. I'll, I'll kind of go back the other direction. So I'll start with you, Jason. Tell me about what this fraternity's felt like when you've been through kind of a, a difficult time right now. Well, I, I can tell you just, just in general that, um, the, you know, the, the baseball community has, has been my life. Um, you know, from, from the time I was born, I, I, you know, I, I can tell you that there's nothing else that I've wanted to do with my life because, the, the greatest men that I've ever been around, um, whether it was my dad or, or anybody else, have been coaches. Um, and so it was, it was really never, you know, it's, it's just, it, it blows my mind because it was, there was never really a question for me what I was going to do. It was just a matter of when and where. Um, I think, you know, more specifically to your question about now, um, you know, I think, I think it's just, um, I, I think I've been blown away by the fact that you know, this, this sport, I think, is so unique in that um, we, we are all so competitive um, and, and we all want to win and we all want to see our program succeed and get better. But you can, you can have a time like this and you can pick up the phone or you can reach out on social media or whatever it is that, that you want to do. And I, I, feel like, I feel like there's college coaches that I could reach out to. There's pro guys that I can reach out to. There's, um, you know, the, 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 rival, um, the rival across town that I can reach out to. And every single one of those guys would pick up the phone and would have a conversation. They would tell you what they're doing, how they're handling the situation. They would listen to what you're doing. And I, I, I just don't think that there's another fraternity on earth that's like that. So I, I just, I, I feel honored to be a part of it every day. Right. Definitely something I want to highlight because it's like right now, again, picking each other out has been pretty great. So, uh, Billy, talk to me a little bit. I know you've been an ABCA member. You've been going to events and uh, you've got, you know, coaching in, in the area for 18, you know, almost two decades. Tell me what that community feels like for you. 
I mean, it's the, the being a part of the uh, ABCA is really cool. I, I really didn't get, uh, you know, into the ABCA until uh, probably uh, about uh, uh, probably eight years ago. Um, I started uh, coaching at Memorial High School uh, with uh, his sister to Jeremy York, who's, who's a longtime coach there, a good friend of mine. Uh, and when I got with him, he said, yeah, we, you know, we're members of the ABCA. We go to the national conventions and I'm like, shoot, let's do it. Let's go. And, uh, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, opened my eyes to how large this coaching fraternity uh, really was. Um, and it, it's, it's just been uh, phenomenal. You know, we have, uh, you know, but prior to that, I always remember of the Texas High School Baseball Coach Association, uh, which is our, our state association here. And it's been, and, and that would, that's always been good. You know, that's, that's where a lot of us, you know, develop our lives and we develop our relationships with, with our coaches within the state. I mean, every time we go to, we have our, our, our convention in Rico, we go there and I mean, it's, it's a, it's a campus thing because that's when you go and you see guys that you've coached with, guys that you know that you coached against uh, and just get together and, you know, just sit there and talk baseball. And it's, you know, it, every year it's, it seems to get better, uh, whether it's the speakers that we listen to or just, just going, you know, a lot of us just like to go and just, just hang out and talk baseball. Um, and that's what's been so great about this, uh, uh, the coach community, you know, even, you know, we have a, a local, uh, our Houston area baseball coach association, uh, which, you know, it's it, it basically it's just there to, to help foster relationships with coaches and, and coaching is so much about, you know, building relationships and building relationships with your players. But, you know, the relationships that I've developed with with, uh, uh, you know, coaches that I've coached with, coached against, it's been it's been amazing. And, and during this time we've been out, it seems like a lot of the conversations that I've had, whether through text, through Zoom chats or whatever, it's with other coaches, um, you know, and it's just, you know, when it's, it's once you get to be where you're isolated and you're not having that connection anymore to be able to reach out to guys like that, like Jason was talking to, you know, whether through Twitter, through these webinars, through whatever the ABCA puts out or, or just just getting on and talking to other coaches that you've met and that you've you know uh, you you've talked with it, it's it's been it's been great and you know with me I I, I always want to continue to grow in coaching and, and being a member of the ABCA and the THSBCA has allowed me uh, to continue to do that and, and you know it's I'm very grateful for that. Great, thank you, Billy. Um, so I'm going to skip, skip Ryan for a second because I want him to talk a little bit deeper on it because he's got a bigger bigger group to talk about. So, Aaron, you talk a little bit about your community. I'm coming right back to you, man, I promise. But, uh, Aaron, tell me about, you know, six, six seconds or so about your, your community, you know, relationship with your coaches. I was similar with uh, Billy to where up until about three years ago, I was just part of the local, the state and the local coaches associations where we'd have small meetings to bring in guest speakers. And um, when I joined up here to Owasso, I became a member of the ABCA. I was fortunate to get to go to Dallas and Nashville and just to get to see how big it was and the quality of speakers and the videos and all the extra material that comes with it. Um, I've really found that there's so much stuff on there. And when you're in the heart of your season, you have a hard time being able to pick through some of that stuff to where now we're, we're got no choice to where I'm pulling up those videos and looking at different stuff, some speakers I didn't have a chance to go see. So that's been really, really good. And one thing that I've noticed is just the guys you coach with, I mean, during the season, you spend more time with them than you do your actual family most of the time. And so when that's pulled away from you right now, we're kind of sitting around and we actually got called up to the field because we're not allowed on school grounds, but we had some kids sneaking on the field using it. And we were asked to, you know, lock up our L screens and lock our stuff up. And we were excited to get up there and just get to lock stuff up because we got to see each other. You know, it'd been, it'd been a week and a half and it felt like it'd been two years since we got to spend any time and talk to each other. So, I mean, it, it's been, it's been a rough time, but it, it's it's a good time to, like you said, I've been talking to former players and guys I coached with and telling stories and kind of time to reflect on what we did have. Great. Thank you, Aaron. Brian, I'm going to let you eventually, you're going to, when you, you go up and talk, I'm going to let you go the full time, but real quick, I'm going to do my 30 seconds and then go. But a couple of things I want to highlight. One is it's been, you know, my only my second year going to the ABC convention and also going to the Barnstormers events, but What's really neat is, you know, you pick up a conversation with a high school friend or a college buddy or whoever it might be you bump into, and it just feels like old times again. Like, that's that's really the relationships that are, that are really unique to see. Um, I know, you know, I'm trying to walk down a hallway and I see somebody here, and you got to jump and just kind of say hello and, and, you know, catch up on some time. So 
it, 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 that fraternity really is special and just doesn't stop. Um, so I really want to highlight just just how unique that is for for all you guys and us carrying through something like that. And, and Aaron, to your point earlier, you know when you know I kind of talked to you, we're kind of going through some some phases of uh, of grieving. I don't want to be insensitive to people who are grieving for you know bigger issues, but like there's a grieving process with all of this, right? And um, I think, you know, the, the first week or two when some schools were being canceled, whether it was the collegiate uh, side of things, where it was the high school side of things, you know, I think we saw a lot of people in that grieving stage. And, and the credit to the baseball fraternity, we're, we're coming out from the ashes and we're, we're stepping back up again. And I think that's, you know, what we're, we're seeing on the blast side is having a really great conversation with coaches. It's a little bit about, obviously, our product and what we can do, but it's a whole lot more about just being there and being a partner with everybody right now. So, um, so what I want to do here is actually skip, on, skip straight forward to Ryan's, uh, to Ryan's you know, piece here. And, Ryan, I want to sit back a little bit longer and really get some feedback from your side on, you know, I, I think it's really neat about you guys. Jason, you mentioned that going all the way from the top of the tier down to your, you know, six and seven U coaches right now. Just give us a great pulse on, on what you're hearing from, from all the different levels and kind of your fraternity and everything going on at the ABCA. Yeah, I've said this a lot. Um, this is the greatest time to be a baseball coach because of what Jason said. Uh, anybody is accessible in the coaching community and we're starting to see so much crossover now from the high school level to college level to now the pro side where I, I do feel like everybody feels an opportunity to give back to the game of baseball because we've all gotten help along the way. And my background is very similar to Jason's background. My dad was a 30 year uh, division one coach. And so I grew up around the ABCA and, and I remember going to conventions when I was younger and, um, you know, on my end, you could sit there, talk to guys, ask questions. And, and that's what I've always loved about our community is because of that, because you could sit in a room. It didn't matter what level they were at. You could ask questions. You could just sit and listen. And so that's what I was brought up on. And when the opportunity came to, to take the ABCA job, that's what I was excited about, because I feel like you can give back to the game of baseball and you can affect every level. And that's from pro on down. And you're seeing that now, and um, this is our community. This is what baseball does. Uh, baseball guys have always been comfortable with taking whatever they have, whether you have drawbacks from your budget or equipment or whatever, and making it work. And you're seeing that with baseball. And, and this isn't surprising to me. You see this every year with the baseball community where guys have challenges, whatever challenges they have, and make it work and have success with, with whatever hand that they're being dealt. And I, I'm not surprised by what's going on right now. Um, you know, and Matt, you said it, you know, you, you have that kind of grieving process where, okay, you know, whatever situation you're in, I had a situation like that at Western Illinois in 2015, 16 and 17, uh, we didn't have a state budget. So you just found a way to, to make it work. And I think a lot of guys are going through that right now. And, and a lot of my conversations have been on the college side, uh, whether it's coaches having to figure out what they're going to do with their budget. Uh, you know, guys may even be, get furloughed at some point, and then it wiggles down into the JUCO side from an eligibility standpoint. I think that's where you're, you're, you had more questions on the college side is once the NCAA was going to make their decision as far as giving everybody a year back or not, um, then you can decide what you're going to do after that. And, and you're going to see it filter down into the high school side. But um, again, what's going on right now has not been surprising to me. And I knew we would all band together. And on our end, um, you know, we're going to come out with some things here the next few weeks that I think are going to help everybody continue to, to get better. And um, that's what we do. We adjust on the fly and, um, you know, that's what baseball guys do. And i um, just happy to be a part of the community. Thank you. What, uh, any sneak preview for like 30 seconds on what might be coming out? Yeah. I mean, there's been some, you know, there's been a lot of good stuff that's been out USA baseball stick and ball, you know, um, even you see small stuff that's going on, but, uh, we are going to, uh, they're going to be kind of mini barnstormer hot stove things that I think are going to be great because we didn't want to rush into something where you were going to exclude uh, people. You know, we didn't want to just kind of get out ahead and start something when, you know, you can only have 200 or 300 or a thousand people on. We wanted to make sure that we were going to do something 
that could get all of our members involved, but then anybody else that maybe wasn't a member that could jump on and kind of figure out what the ABCA is about. So it's gonna, I'm excited. We, we had our first couple meetings here uh, today and then tomorrow. So I, I can't give all the specifics, but it's gonna be something really good for everybody. Great, I'm excited. I'll, I'll poke your ear, I'll be texting you to figure out what's going on, so. <laughs> uh, Ryan, a little bit, just real quick, because I know for me, i kind of joking, I'm the old guy, uh, the Blast Group, we got a bunch of younger guys you've seen out, right? All these guys are just out of college working, and, um, and, and let me also appreciate the dads on this call. I know there's quite a few dads that keep their kids out. I got mine locked in the garage, so if they're out of the way, but uh, tell me, you know, I, I could brag a little bit about, you know, humbly brag a little bit about the Blast culture and the guys that are here at Blast Motion, but it's going to sound like an infomercial on my end, but you've been out with ups and up. Just tell me a little bit of your, you know, another minute or two just on your experience of the guys we've got here. Yeah, because I, I think it's the best of everything with Blast uh, because you have baseball guys, um, you know, and that's nothing against anybody else and, and what they're doing, but you have guys that are smart on the technology side of things, but then can relay it uh, to baseball guys because uh, I, I run into it with a lot of the tech that is out there. I feel like I'm a fairly intelligent individual, but there are things that I don't understand. So, you know, Justin Tool is played for me at Iowa. He's with the Indians. He sent something out the other day and I text him. I'm like, Hey, I need you to dummy down what you're talking about. So he picked up the phone and called me and I, I need things simplified. And that's how I was as a coach. And I think all coaches go through that. Your job is to take the information that's out there and make it digestible for the guys that you coach, because if you can't do that, they're going to get shut down. And Justin, and I talked about that. We did. We talked about the blast sensors, you know, he feels like his job with the Indians is to take the information that's out there and then relay it to their players. And we did talk about the sensor. And so that's a lot of what he does is, is take the information that's out there and make sure that his guys can digest it. And I, that's the great thing with the, the blast culture is that it is baseball guys. So you pick up the phone and, and talk or just have a conversation with you guys. You're going to come away from that conversation understanding what you're supposed to do and and how you use the, the information and, and the technology that's out there and allow your guys to be able to take that and, and run with it so that's what i've been great and i like having conversations with guys so i don't care who it's been out of your crew you know taylor worked with us the most on on the ones that i did for the barnstormer and he and i are, are very similar on on habits and routines and so that's what I've loved about it, too. You know, outside of the events that we've run, you can just have a conversation with somebody. And that's been the, one of the most enjoyable things for me. Well, thank you, Ryan. You know, that goes right back at you guys, too, with, uh, with all the support you've had on your end. So um, and it kind of leads perfectly into, you know, I wanted to kind of get the we were kind of talking about the coaching community and where we're going and kind of lead into blast a little bit. So I wanted you to kind of dive a little bit into the culture that was there. And then move, I think uh, if we want to move on to our next slide, I think we're going to have uh, Jason up next. Is that right? So this, this play is perfect, Jason, because I wanted to go over to you. You're sort of the longest last motion user with on the baseball side with uh, high school. You're actually one of the, probably one of the first high schools that I, I think came in and really took it on. So I, I think you kind of have an overview, and that's kind of the pulse of high school baseball. But I want to hear the pulse of high school baseball with um, – with what it was like bringing Blast into your organization, your program, um, kind of from day one until kind of where you're at now. And I'm just going to sit back and give you give you some time to, to go with it. Yeah, man. So um, appreciate that. So, you know, we we just basically um, basically finished our what would essentially be our second full year um, working with Blast. And, and I know um, the – the two biggest changes I, I think I think that I've seen number one has been on the coaching side um, for for me um, and and the best way the best way that I can that I can explain that change is it's 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 forced me um, it's forced me to be able to back up my coaching um, and and what I mean by that is this you know before before the sensors I, I can I can specifically remember being in the cages um, you know, whether, whether it's, you know, we're doing flips or, or, you know, hitting off a tee or a machine or, or beef, you know, whatever it is. Right. Um, you know, and a, and a guy finds a barrel and, and as soon as he finds a barrel, you know, it's, it's the, the ball's still in flight. Now, you know, I'd sit there and it's a, you know, Hey, attaboy, you know, and you're, and you're giving that feedback and you're reinforcing. And, and if he doesn't find a barrel, um, then, then my go-to was, you know, was to go through all these cues. Right. 
um, you know, hey man, let's let's stay inside, let's stay above it, let's stay behind it, let's get the front, you know, what whatever, right? And and you just keep um, you keep throwing out these cues until something works, and he finds the barrel, and then all of a sudden, you know, all right, now we're going to stick with that one, right? That that cue didn't, so we're going to stick with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the first things that I found when, when we, when we fully integrated this two years ago was kid would, kid would find a barrel and I, you know, and I would give him that positive reinforcement. And then I'd look down at the iPad or at my phone or whatever, you know, whatever we were, we were looking at that day. Um, and, and you would see some numbers there that were clearly not good. Um, and so it, it forced me to kind of step back and, and go, okay, you know what, like I've, I've, I've got to be able to slow down a little bit. Um, and I've got to be able to, to take the data that's there and make sure that, that what I'm, what I'm telling that kid is, is the right thing at the right time. Um, and so that was, um, that, that was the first big change, um, for us. I think the, the second and more important big change for us was it, it put the, um, it put the ownership of development into the hands of our players versus me controlling their development. Um, right. I, I think, I think early on, and, and to be honest, you know, I can, I can remember early on in my, in my career, Matt, I, I wanted that power, right? Like I, I wanted to be the guy that fixed everything. Um, and if, if you figured it out, I wanted it to be because, because I figured it out for you. Um, and, and the longer I think I've gone, the more, the more I've realized that, um, you know, while, while certainly I, I, I hope I'm an asset to my players, um, that if, if they're if they're truly going to improve long term, if they're if they're truly going to have significant gain, they have to own their development. And so, with with the technology that Blast gives us, it it fully puts that power into their hands. Um, when we first came on, um, when we first came on a couple years ago, um, initially, I, I can tell you, man, the you know the 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 buy-in was off the charts. Um, and, and we spent, um, and we did the same thing this year. We, we try to spend about the first two weeks of our off season, um, getting as much data as we can get on every single player that we've got. Um, and, and our guys, um, our, our guys do a great job, man. They, you know, they get, they get tons of swings, um, in, in all kinds of different environments. Um, one of the big issues that we had early on is, you know, we're, we're in that kind of fact finding phase of our off season and, and they can, um, they can get a little overwhelmed, I think sometimes with, with everything that's, that's there for them. And so, you know, one of the things for us was early on, we figured out that, that we, we have to help them figure out where they need to focus, what metrics they need to focus on. Um, and, and then once they kind of get that baseline, then we can start to expand and go into other things. Um, so, you know, so we'll spend, like, so we, we've kind of spent the first two to three weeks um, each year kind of kind of building that profile on each player. And then once we get through that, um, then, then the, the off season for us, um, the essentially the entire fall semester turns into not so much of team development, but of individual development. And, I, I know there's there's different ways to do it. Um, you know, guys guys do it different ways, and, and and that works. But what what's worked really well for us is um, with with the information that we can get from Blast is is we we turn the off season into hey we're we're going to try to build the best individual player that we can build, and then and then our thought process is then we'll in the spring we'll put it all together into a team, um, and and that's that's worked really well for us. So so what we can do then is with that mindset and with the data that we pull early on is we can start to uh, we can start to individualize workouts for kids we can start to group kids based on what they need to work on Um, I I think it helps the kids focus um, and I think it helps us as coaches know hey this this is what this is what we need to focus on today with with this specific group or this specific young man so we may be doing um, you know Everybody, everybody may be hitting. Uh, everybody may be hitting off a machine today in, in one of the cages, but everybody's got a different. Everybody's got a different focus on what it is they're trying to accomplish, um, and that's that's really what drives the offensive side of our off season. And you know the 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 results. Um, you know the results from this year. Obviously, you know right now are a little bit skewed just because the the season was cut so short, or at least to this point has been cut so short. Um, but you know, Matt, I, I, I tell people, 
um, when um, this this group of kids that we have right now, um, prior to prior to uh, purchasing sensors for all of our kids in our program, um, our varsity team in 2018, we we had and, and granted we we had a young team, uh, we had 33 extra base hits um, that year. Uh, a year later, after after using blast for an off season and then you know and then through the season. Um, our, our extra base hits were, were up just under a hundred. Um, I mean, that's a, that's an unbelievable gain. Now, granted, some of that is just, you know, they're older, they're more experienced, they're bigger, they're stronger. I get that. Uh, but, I, but I truly believe the fact that, that we could put the, the power into their hands to kind of build their swing. Um, I, I think that had a lot to do with it. Well, and Jason, something you mentioned that I'm, I'm sure you'd stand behind too. I, I agree. It's like a, a coach is a mentor and moving you across, but you need to own your development, right? You're a school teacher also. Um, Aaron, I know you are too. Like my wife's a school teacher. They can only do so much in the classroom and then you got to go home and do the homework, right? And it sounds like, you know, your guys like are, are taking not only what you're doing, you know, on the field day in and day out, but taking outside that field too. Um, I just, you know, do you want to highlight, a, you know, just, just what, it's, what it's like when they get off the field? Because I think that's an important message. Well, I, I think um, I, I think you're absolutely right, man. I, I think um, I, I think the the fact the fact that they can that they can own that development, the fact that they that they do have the the power to sit there and look at um, you know their their phone or, or again an iPad or whatever it is that you have there for them. I think the fact that they that they have that information in their hands, I, I think it's a I think it's a great motivator. Um, we we have guys, we've had guys, you know, both years that we've done this that with Quite, quite honestly, with no coaching on my part, um, we, we can get them hooked up at the sen uh, with a sensor. We can test initially, and within that two-week span, they, they figured out how to self-organize and increase bat speed um, four, five, six. I mean, we, we've, had kids, we've had kids jump double-digit miles an hour on bat speed just because they can look down at their phone after every single swing and see where they're at. Um, and, you know, and, and just the, the human body is built to do that, right? It's, it's built to self-organize and, and find the best way to complete a task. And the minute you put that information in their hand, um, man, they, they, they want it and they want to get better. Um, and, and I love it. And so, you know, I think, um, as I, and I, I, I know I digress slightly from your question, but, um, you know, when I, when I talk to coaches sometimes and, and they'll ask about what we're doing, I think I think sometimes there, there's a fear that when you put this technology in in your in your kids' hands that that you know you you almost um, you almost kind of mute yourself as the coach right that you you become that you become unneeded um, and and in fact I, I I feel like it's been the exact opposite for us I, I feel like I feel like my kids ask better questions now that they have that data in their hand I feel like they're more engaged um, I I feel like it's more enjoyable for them. Um, and, and I also think, you know, com coming back to kind of teaching these, these life lessons, right, is, um, you know, when, when they don't perform well, when they're not seeing the gains that they want, um, th there's this frustration piece that, that you get to kind of help coach them through. You know, how, how do we deal with that? You know, okay, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to work on, you know, your attack angle, and it's not improving or it's not getting to where we want it to go, even though you're doing drill X, Y, and Z. Okay, now we can have a conversation. All right, well, you know, son, you you tell me how do you think we can get that better, right? Because you know what I'm what I'm telling you obviously isn't isn't working. We haven't got there yet. What are your ideas? And so you can kind of coach them through those conversations, and and there's there's kind of this life lesson piece that comes out of it too. Um, so man, it's it's just it's it's been an it's just been an all around great thing, and and the fact that you know the fact that our guys do so much on their own with it. Um, I, I think is just a huge plus for us, no question. Right. Yeah, thank you. I think, um, yeah, there are a couple different things there that resonated with me, but you mentioned that coaching is more important now than ever. Um, Ryan, you've heard me specifically say this, you know, over and over again, where like, I, I believe where we're going with, with anything new, right? Coaching yourself on a, picking up a smartphone or wherever it might be, like, it's a new new challenge. I think coaching is at the peak of importance as we're shifting towards 2020 and new technology. So thank you, Jason. I, one of the things you said, which leads really good into to Aaron's piece here um, as we kind of moving forward is building that player profile, right? So you kind of mentioned the importance of getting your guys early, getting a player profile together, understanding what that looks like, and then you can get some baselines to kind of go from there. 
So Aaron, um, you know, has had a pretty unique opportunity to, um, you know, work with our account managers. I know you guys all work with those account managers also, but um, we're now bringing out some of these new swing player profiles. And I want Aaron to kind of walk through um, how he's been setting up those for his guys and uh, kind of walk us through from like, hey, hey, I got my swings. They're, they go up, at, for, for those that might not know, they go up into a cloud. Aaron's got all this data he can use. And then he's bringing it to this really neat report that allows his guys to kind of see what they're looking at. So, Aaron, I know you got some slides and some things to go through. So, I'll sit back and kind of let you run it, man. Yeah, when we started out uh, back in September, we were working with uh, Jeff McGarry, who's been awesome with us. Um, we ask him a lot of questions, and he talks with us a lot. And he really seemed genuinely interested in our program and excited to see it succeed. So he was always asking for updates on how we're doing. And um, myself and another assistant, uh, Brandon Brewer, we kind of spearheaded this deal. And um, we we would make reports on our own guys. Um, we would get through the baseline stuff, like Jason said. And then every few weeks, we would test again. And then we'd, we'd make charts and stuff comparing, like, what their gains were, where they're regressing, what's working, what's not. And I would send some of that stuff to Jeff and kind of just to kind of to see if we're doing it right, if we're on the right track, um, and uh, kind of share with them the progress that some of our guys were making because we had some guys make some huge jumps early on. Um, and a lot of it was going back to something Jason was talking about. We've all had that kid that's in the past that people would call uncoachable. They're hard-headed. They're almost defensive that you're trying to change their swing. Well, now you have a number that you can approach him and start a conversation about, you know, he doesn't, when we're posting these competitions and posting our leaderboard and stuff, and, um, you know, he's our five hole, but he's number 15 on the list on bat speed or something like that. That's, that doesn't sit well with them. So now you can have a conversation about how to get that number up by adjusting parts of their swing to where it's kind of been a bridge for us to, to get some of our guys to, to kind of not think as, we're completely changing their swing. We're just improving certain parts and them chasing that, that number has helped us a lot. Um, but communicating with Jeff and sending all the reports that we were doing and our comparisons and all that stuff, I think that um, he sent me a template for a Excel spreadsheet that has, was a game changer for us. I'm, I'm not going to lie that the day that he sent it to me and I sent it on to uh, Coach Brewer, there wasn't a whole lot of teaching going on that day because we were both so excited to dig into this and start making these reports. Um, both of our classes kind of went on cruise control that day. Um, but so the first thing to do, it's a super simple process. Um, when you're on Blast Connect, you log in. Um, if it's just your son or daughter or if you've got a roster, you just click on the one player. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see a red arrow. Um, there's three dots there. If you click on that, um, that's how you'll open up and create a report. So you just click save as Excel. And when you click on that, it may take may take a second because there's a lot of data. It's taking all the metrics from every single swing that that kid has recorded. So it can take a little bit of time. Um, he sent it to me as an Excel document. Our school, we use the Google flat platform, um, but it was a super easy. All you had to do is save it as a Google Sheet, and it, it works just the same with no problems whatsoever. So once you finally get the, the report to pull up, I have an arrow up there in the upper left-hand corner of the sheet. Um, if you click on that, it automatically selects all the data in the spreadsheet. And then when you right-click on it, if you go to the next slide, you'll just click on copy. So you're gonna copy that again. This could take a second because there's a ton of information that your computer's having to work through. And then if you go to the next slide, once you have that report copied, this is an example of the template that Jeff had sent us. Um, it's got real simple, straightforward directions on the on the first tab. Um, on the right hand side, uh, under key points, it does say that it, the generator only works for a thousand swings. Um, so it's going to take the a thousand most recent swings. So if you run a report on a kid, I don't know if you noticed it, but the kid I picked, he had over three thousand swings. I don't have to go in there and fiddle with the dates to try to get to a thousand because when I copy and paste it all in it's only looking at the, the top 1,000 swings. So you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. But if you click on the middle tab on the bottom where it says copy BC report, if you go to the next slide, that's gonna pull up what looked really similar to the report you just ran from Blast Connect. I deleted the numbers that were on there before just to kind of make it easier to look at, but it's gonna look exactly the same. And then all you gotta do is click on the A1 box. I've got an arrow pointing to it. 
and all you gotta do is paste what you had copied from before. And then after you have that pasted in, go ahead to the next slide, please. Once you've got that pasted in, it looks exactly like the report you already ran. The tab on the right at the bottom that says view player analysis, when you click on that, it's going to create a hitter profile for that player. And again, it, it can take a little bit of time since it's a lot of stuff. But when, when we saw this, we were, me, myself and Coach Brewer and the other coaches we shared it with were just blown away because it, one of the things we noticed about Blast is there is a ton of information. And it's kind of tough to figure out where to start from. And this kind of organized it for us to where we, cre we created, we've got 60 guys in our program that have sensors, the non-pitchers. And we were able to create one of these for every player in less than two hours with uh, Coach Brewer and I working together on it. Um, so it, it breaks it down into power metrics, contact metrics, load consistency metrics, and the impact position. And if you look, if you want to look at the power metrics, the kid that I use as an example, it shows that his average bat speed was 66.5 miles an hour and his peak his max was 80.5 miles per hour. And then down below that in red, you'll see what the major league average is and the college average is. And then it does the same thing for your rotational acceleration. His average was 8.9 Gs. His max was 23.3. And then you can compare it to the averages. So right now, just looking at this, you can see that he's his rotation isn't there. And I know who I'm talking about. So he's, he's a big, strong kid. So there, there's something going on in his swing that he's leaving something on the table. So that gives us something that we can focus on with him. Next, the contact metrics um, is their on-plane efficiency. How long is their barrel on the plane that they're, they're at when they're making contact? Um, he was at 74% as an average. The goal is at 70 down there in red, and it shows what his attack angle is. Um, next to that is the load consistency metrics. Um, that's pretty much the angle of the bat compared to the angle of their body. When they start their swing, and the goal is to be around 90 degrees. Um, and all this stuff that I'm kind of saying, if you look where the little diagrams are, where the paragraph is, that's explaining what, what each of these mean. Um, so he, he's, this took us quite a bit of ways away from 90. So that's another thing that we focused on him to try to get him a little bit closer to 90 degrees. Um, and then the impact position is the, the angle of the bat with his body. At he's, at, he's pretty close to 90. He's at almost 84 degrees. So this gives us an opportunity to kind of look for this hitter, we worked on his load, uh, his connection at, at his load, to try to get those numbers a little bit closer to 90, which is going to help his on-plane efficiency. And then we started really filming his swing and looking closer, and we noticed that, you know, his hands were kind of cheating. His hips were falling behind his hands, and so he was pretty much all upper body, what he was generating his bat speed with. Um, and one, one cool thing about, about this is, Coach Brewer, our assistant, he's like a wizard with graphic design and stuff like that. So he was able to take this and turn it into a PDF file that's not overwhelming, that gives the basic information. It looks good. We were able to add some of our artwork to it. And he can text it to every single one of our players. So we could run these every month and send it to them. And so now those guys have it on their phone, what their numbers are, how it compares to like a big league guy, how it compares to a college player. And – um I mean, when they when they got something like this, it, it's I think it's really cool for them. It was cool for us to see and generate these, but I know they really enjoyed seeing it put up like this. Aaron, man, I don't have anything to add. That was great. So, you know, for for those that are maybe listening in, and Jason and Billy, I know you guys just started up. So this lives outside of Blast Connect. So we have our normal portal that's in. This is an Excel doc that lives outside of that um, that we're now giving to our key accounts. So Jason and, and Billy, we're, we'll get all, I'm sure you guys kind of poke, poke around a little bit. We'll get that over to you guys. But yeah, it's been a real, we just, we, we kind of had it internal for a very long time. We were trying to figure out how we want to message out, how to get these reports out to some of you guys. Um, I know, you know, Aaron, you guys are working with some guys who have, uh, you know, goals to maybe get the pro ball, but I know even if I was 12 or 13, if I could see what my swing looked like up against college and pro guys, that would be something that would excite me, even though I'm sure my numbers would, well, I pitched, so I couldn't, my rotation right. acceleration is a mess now at 40, but, uh, but yeah, we'd be able to kind of, kind of, you know, see some of this stuff. So for those that, uh, if you want to ask questions, uh, just a reminder, you can ask questions through this, just type them in down below. We'll get to them, um, you know, after all this, I'll make sure I reach out uh, again, personally and answer any of those questions, but, 
I know when this comes up and everything you went through, I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of questions. How do I get that? Where is it at? What's going on? Um, it really is for our key accounts. So Jeff McGarry, you mentioned Aaron, and we have John Moscott, who's our new account manager. So both those guys are are around to answer any of the questions for some of those key accounts from the uh, from that side for any of our customers that might be on. Aaron, a big thank you. Uh, Billy, I give you the credit, man. A lot of patience to just sit there. You know, coaches coaches is how I coach and, and talk. So sorry sorry to put you in. You're, you're hitting fourth, so you're all right. But uh, sorry to put you in the cleanup hole. Uh, you know, I want to kind of dive into two separate areas for you, kind of some open-ended questions. One kind of similar to Jason, you brought this into your organization, your program this past fall, but you're also looking, you know, at a time of, uh, you know, I guess some uncertainty, you know, the market and where things are at and what's going on. Um, you have a vision on, on taking this to some of your other guys right now, you know, making some decisions on, on moving forward right now. So I want to hear one blast and, and why and where you went into and then kind of extend that into what you're looking to do, um, you know, like right now to get to get some more hardware and some some sensors in some guys' hands and get get them swinging. So, uh, again, I'll, just like these guys, I'll sit back and uh, just let you run, Coach. Well, I mean, just, just listening to these guys talk about this stuff, it, just, it's, it gets me fired up. And it's, you know, I get kind of antsy sitting there, sitting at home and not, man, I just I want to put my hands on this, get get it to my guys, get going. The, the thing that Aaron showed, I mean. I'm sure Jason feels the same way, man. When, when can we get that? When can we get to the kids? And I always ask myself, where was all this stuff when I played? You know, maybe, maybe I could have actually been somebody if, uh, if I had all this stuff. But, uh, uh, you know, with us, uh, with me, I, I've always been a you know a tech guy. Um, I, I like technology and, um, you know, in, in being able to incorporate it, you know, in baseball is something that I've always – been fascinated with. I'm always kind of the first guy on something new comes out. Hey, what is that? What's it about? What? How can I can I use it to an advantage somehow, some way? And that's with anything that I do. Um, but uh, you know, probably about uh, two years ago, I guess 2018, um, we had uh, the the Barnstormers tour came to University of Houston. Um, I wasn't able to go because I coach football as well. But my assistant, uh, he's just a baseball coach. He went to the Barnstormers thing, and, uh, you know, when he came back, I was like, well, how was it? And he was, he was talking about all these things that he saw, and he said, hey, have you seen this blast motion thing? And I was like, uh, well, I kind of heard of it. You know, I kind of remember going to the, uh, the last convention, and I kind of saw it, and I didn't really know what it was. And, you know, um, he said, well, I think it's pretty cool. And he's a pitching guy. Um, so um, he was like, yeah, we might look into it. He gave me a brochure and everything. I looked at it and everything, and I was like, yeah, this is this is this is something that's that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm kind of interested in it. Of course, football season goes on and get busy, um, and then we go to the uh, national convention um, in Dallas, uh, and uh, you know that was one of the things that I put down. Hey, we're going to go talk to the Blast guys. They were given a uh, um, you know a talk at, at one of the little side little uh, speaking uh, events, and I was like, all right, put that on my calendar. I'm going to go watch, and I watch, and and I was just amazed at the amount of things that, that, you know, that, that they were showing and what they could actually how they could take the swing, uh, you know, and break it down and look at deficiencies. And, and my thing was, cause I'm a visual guy being able to see it, put it up on a screen, uh, on your phone, whatever it is. It was like, man, I think that's something that's really cool because our kids nowadays, they're all into, you know, on their phones, you know, with Instagram and Snapchat and all that stuff, I was thinking, you know, if they have access to this, this is something I think that they would really dive into. Um, and so at that point in time, I was like, yeah, we're, we, we, we want to get onto this. Started talking to Blast guys, talked to Jeff uh, about it. Um, and uh, he was like, hey, you just let me know when you're ready to get on board. We get in the season, things get busy. Uh, and it came the summertime. I said, yeah, I want to try it. Um, I want to research it a little bit more, and, and that's what that's what I did. Me and my sister, we went, and I went to Blast uh, website. I went to YouTube. Um, I saw a lot of stuff that uh, Jason and his guys were doing, guys at uh, uh, MacArthur, San Antonio MacArthur, those guys that, that they have it and what they were doing and how they're implementing it. Um, and, and our deal was, well, you know, is you know, cost may be an issue right now, but we're going to try to see what we can do. So what we started out with, is and we talked to some other guys that had it we said well, we're going to start out we're going to get two sensors you know and that way we can have a guy that's using it have a guy that's you know ready to go uh, you know in a cage or whatever we're doing 
Um, you know, and then when that guy that's done, when he gets out, the next guy pops in, he already has it on there so we can keep going. And we were just going to run with it. We didn't uh, really start uh, this last fall until uh, October. I think October 1st uh, was the first time that uh, we actually used it. We got them in and we did that. And it was just kind of a, you know, trial by error type of thing for us. Um, and, and the kids, they had heard about it. But they really didn't know. They kind of, when they got them, they were like, you know, this is kind of weird. But um, it was a technology thing. And we talked to them about it a little bit before. Um, and, and, you know, our kids are always good kids and they're, they're willing to do whatever we, we ask them to do. So they got in there. And I mean, the, the bad thing was as soon as we got done, because we have seventh period baseball, um, as soon as seventh period is done, that's the last period of the day. I have to go to football practice. And so we got all their swings. You know, we had an, uh, we had an iPad um, and it was as we we're going through, it was, you know, downloading all their swings and everything. And. And I'm look. I'm looking at the iPad as I'm going to to football uh, practice. And so I get in there, put the stuff down. I go to practice. I come back. The iPad had it. All their swings were downloaded, and I immediately went to the Blast Connect and started looking at stuff. And I was just like, Oh my gosh! You know, this there were so many so many things there. You know, what do I need to look at? You know, what's going to be important here for for our guys? And, and like the other guys say, you, you can. It, there's a lot of stuff in there, and you can really get, you know, overwhelmed with the amount of things uh, that were on there. Um, and so basically I, I started, you know, talking to some other people about it that had it, looked at things and, and I decided, well, we're going to show our guys this. I think the first thing we need to do is we need to explain to the kids what all this means. Uh, and so what I did was uh, I went uh, and the stuff that I had researched and looking at the, the packet that, that came with it and, um, you know, the PD, I looked at all the different PDFs and what, you know, what's, what's makes, what makes up, you know, your rotation score, what makes up your playing score, your connection score, what goes into all that. And I basically made a, a Google slide um, out, out of it and, uh, you know, put it up on the screen. Uh, I found a video uh, from a barnstormer uh, that uh, was in uh, last, uh, the, I think the last fall, or it may have been right, right before the season. Um, but anyway, um, the YouTube, and I cannot remember who the two guys were, but they did a really good job. One was, one was a, a sales guy and another one was the guy that, that's in blast and that played and they explained every one of the, uh, the scores, the playing rotation, uh, and connection. And I was like, man, I'm getting that video. I'm going to put it in this Google slide and I'm just going to, because they explained it a heck of a lot better than I do. Um, and so that's what we did. We do a lot of classroom stuff with our guys, especially in the fall. Um, we use Google Classroom and we put out all of our things on there, videos and stuff. And so we brought them in. We went through it. We showed them the videos, explained everything. And by that time, we had a pretty good baseline on their, um, their swings. Um, and at, what I had done is I went through and I, and I knew that, you know, Obviously, there are kids that, you know, had rotation problems or kids that had connection problems. You know, they're all different. Um, and so what we decided, what we did is basically decided for the rest of the fall, we were going to do like probably what Jason was talking about and everybody does is you start grouping them with what their their major deficiencies were. And that's what we did. Um, and it was very easy being able to do that from the blast report uh, that um, Aaron kind of showed uh, that's just an Excel. Uh, and it was easy to group those guys. Um, and what we did is, and that's what we did when we went out in the fall, um, the rest of the fall, we grouped them to what their deficiencies were. And, you know, those groups had certain drills. So we tried to individualize a little bit what their cage work was. Yes. When they came to us in a cage, when we were hitting off a T, if we had the, when we had the sensors hitting off the T or the machine, or we had a coach throwing live, um, that was that part, but the other parts were then other uh, stations were them working on what kind of their deficiencies uh, were in the drills. And what was really cool about it is once we sent that, so the kids could see that on their phones. They did what Jason was saying. They 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 started coaching themselves. They started looking at it and say, you know, oh this is this is my rotation score. Hey, what's yours? Let me see yours. What's your bat speed? What's your? And it was just like caught like wildfire 
because the kids are competitors and they want to compete. And of course, I'd seen you know uh, things about you know got other last people doing the leaderboards and because they were comp competitive by nature. Um, and so that was one thing we did. Usually when we when we came back from Thanksgiving, we have a, a two two to three week. We go all the way up to Christmas break um, where we do nothing every day. It's it's what we call the BCAS challenge. It's kind of like you know, I'll just have Omaha or whatever. We do that. We put them in teams and groups, uh, and we incorporated blast some of the blast metrics in those uh, competitions that we did. Um, so um, we did, uh, you know, bat speed was a big one. Um, you know, we, we gave them points on who had whoever, whatever team had the highest bat speed um, or wherever it was, you know, the highest playing efficiency or anything like that. And those guys got into it just like they do everything else. Um, and, you know, even though we, we just we had it just for a short amount of time, um, it, it became really important to those guys. And those guys would look at it and, you know, they they want, hey, um, you know, can we get the sensor? Now, what we did, we only set up our varsity kids on it uh, because we, we had the two sensors and we just, when we had, um, you know, we had about 20 kids on the varsity that would swing in a game. And that's what we set up with, with the uh, Blast Connect. Uh, and, and that's where, that's how we started it. And it was all just, hey, let's see what we can get out of it. Let's see how it works. Um, and I mean, I, I was I was bought in right away. But watching the kids um, get with it and respond with it, I mean, they, it, it hooked them too. And once I saw that, I was like, I told our assistant, I said, we got to step up with this pretty soon. Um, and then, uh, you know, we, we had plans, you know, we, we use it a little bit in the, in the spring, a lot of time in the spring, we kind of switch from going from development to, you know, with, with hitters and their mechanics to now in the spring, you're usually, you're, you're working probably a lot more on approach, uh, than you do just, uh, straight mechanics. And so we kind of focused on that. Uh, but to starting off of that way in the fall, I mean, it's, it's definitely got us to where, you know, we're want to take it further. Billy, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm glad you're having that experience. Seems like all I think what's unique about what ABCA is looking out of, and then also what the what you coaches are. It's, it's all about the players, right? You guys just care. Uh, again, watching my wife as a school teacher, she's got 20 kids, and she can just make two, you know, two guys or girls have a better day, a better moment, grow a little bit. It's a win, you know. It's a win for her. She comes home all giddy, and it sounds like your experience is the, you know, taking a little bit of that and, and getting that out of your guys, right? Like it just, there's something inside that it, you, you might be bought in, but like when they get there and you see their eyes kind of, kind of light up, it's a different feeling. So, um, you know, I wanted to kind of run this up under an hour. We're kind of right there. So um, again, if you guys have questions that are, that are out there listening and watching, please put down there. I was going to pepper these guys with a bunch of questions, but I feel like I got so much content here. I don't, I don't need to go, go any further. I mean, I, <laughs> I think you listen to 50 50 no as a credit i think you get 50 55 minutes of this um you know you're going to learn a whole lot about um what you great high school coaches are doing uh the pulse of the the baseball culture and fraternity with abca and everything that's going on ryan i'm excited to see what you guys are going to be putting out but um a big thank you to the entire panel guys um you know blast you guys are our family so we appreciate all your support and uh and stay safe and and uh for those kids that are interested uh that can swing in your backyard right now um get out there and do it you get you see a lot of cool stuff from the remote side uh you know we we had an organization in brooklyn take almost twenty thousand swings over two weeks and they were doing it inside building their own tees hitting heavy socks like trying to find anything that they could do so uh, kind of in these challenging times, you know, we don't want coaches to stop coaching. We don't want players to stop playing. We want everyone to be safe and respect what's going on. But uh, I know 12-year-old Matt would have found some way to be hitting something up against the wall right now if I was stuck inside. So, uh, and, I know, and I know the coaches can't stop coaching. You know, you guys can't stop, whether it's Zoom calls with your guys, whether it's text messaging, um, you know, whether it's maybe getting your guys and, and get some data and be able to talk to them in between everything. So I uh, want to thank the panel and uh, look, you know, look forward to helping some coaches. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, thanks, thanks for Matt. having me. Thank you, Billy. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Aaron.